So I couldn't shut the water off. So the water shut off now. So I'm gonna replace all of this and carefully cut it out. The joys of being a homeowner. So these pipes here don't just go straight down. So it means I'm gonna have to cut right below that. And then this box will end up going up higher. And hopefully, hopefully I have the right PVC in order to extend that drain. Uh, it's not ideal. But I'm gonna have to end up cutting all this dry out, wall out and then go halfway on the stud and then put the box in and all that jazz. So we're getting a new washer and dryer. I still have some work to do on this in order to get the water be able to be turned back on, but it's gonna be a double stack. Hey there, it's Farmer Brad here, and I wanted to share some experience that I've had with our washer and dryer situation. This is not a how-to um, because I'm not a plumber, but uh, just wanted to educate you with some things that I've learned. So this is our new washer and dryer, and we had a dryer that was on its last leg, and so uh, the night before we were getting the new units installed, I ended up uh, disconnecting the spigot from the washing machine. Unfortunately, I couldn't shut the water off, so I had to shut off the house water because it was corroded and just was really bad. So I went to the hardware store to replace it so that then there would be no issues with the install, but uh, ran into some problems. I went to Menards. Then when I got back, I found out that it was a um, it was a spigot like this, and it was uh, soldered the, directly to the copper. So um, I did not feel confident in this gap back here with an internal wall to try to do a sweat fitting. So then I got some shark bites and was like, okay, I'm going to fix it. Well, then when I got home, I saw that it was like this. And so then I had to go back and get some additional parts. The parts that I got were a uh, shark bite that threaded into those. And then I ran into the problem. There was, uh, let me grab it. There were 90 degree pieces like this. And when I cut it off, there really wasn't enough to bite it. Uh, I'll show you guys some pictures of sort of the steps as I'm as I'm talking about it, but there really was not enough to bite on here with the shark bite. And then to complicate things, I also had to glue the drain. And so needless to say, I I, I struggled. So then I got things squared away, but then there was still a partial leak. So I only put this blue Teflon tape. I did not know about this glue, this blue um, lube sealant. And so we ended up having a plumber come today just to give a uh, peace of mind uh, before I put drywall on this. And he only put the blue sealant on the cold side. I would have thought that uh, if he realized that I didn't have any blue sealant that he would have done it on the other side, but no. So then when I get home to try to tidy it all up, then I realize that the left side is leaking as well. So then I go back to the store and then when I, at the store I realize that then I only bought a $10 box and my thought was if I was going to do it, might as well do it right. So I went ahead and purchased this, I think it was like $69 box. Some of the features that I like about it are that it has um, the 
hammer arrestor valves, which are those uh, things on top of those valves. And the other part I like about it is that just one rotation and that comes out. So, and then there is a shark bite on the bottom connector. So it's one less thing to be an issue. Now these were put on by the factory. Um, so I should be able to trust that. And this box is definitely a lot more heavy duty. Uh, this was a $10 box. Um, and so I have some more PEX piping uh, if I need to recut those. But let's get this started and do it right. First thing to do is go ahead and shut off the house water. So I'll do that now. Here in the basement, we have well water and this is the main that comes in and this is a shut off. Now, this part, I end up soldering uh, all of these to put in this water heater when our, I, I mean water softener, when our other water softener went bad. And so this allows for us to bypass the water softener, you end up shutting that off and then you open that up and then that lets it bypass the water softener. And so this is shut off. So we have a bathroom downstairs and to relieve some of the pressure off the water lines, I'm going to just turn the faucet on Okay, that should be good. Now I'm going to push this washing machine as far as I can over here to give me more room. Okay, now I have more light and more room. Now I'll time lapse and get the old box out there and then I can mount the new one and get it squared away.
and you cut this down further and fasten these lower so you can make that that angle. Cut this down further. Okay, so I'm going to cut down here and put this fitting down here and then that will give me some room to flex it over to that spot. So that was a situation where draining or uh, using the faucet down in the basement drained the water out of this pipe. And so that should have no problem flexing like that. So I'm going to use this little copper cutter, make a nice little cut and what you do is you gradually tighten it Okay, that was a pretty smooth cut. Now I'm gonna get my deburring tool, deburr that. So you wanna deburr the inside. Then I got the sandpaper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shove this on really good, make sure it bites onto the pecs, and then yank it the other way. Okay, so that's good. And I'm going to get this glued in first so that I know where this is going to be and I don't want this to be in the way. I'm going to take these out so 
I don't happen to get any glue on them. And plan of action is do the cleaner, put it like this, and then rotate it flush. Okay, I have clear cleaner. I'm gonna go around here like so and around on there. Put the glue on. And then rotate to flush. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and get the brackets in place. See if that fits. So I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these uh, straps on there, so I'm going to try to course, like, encourage it to sit back in there. In hindsight, you should probably put these straps on the box first before sitting it in. One more. So get the box where you want it to be. Then screw it in. I'm just going to use some drywall screws since I have them. is not going anywhere. I should be able to go ahead and connect the hot water. Let's see. Yeah, that, that should sit enough. Okay, so 
So that one should be good. So I got this pushed on all the way. this down on there if you have the opportunity push down pull up make sure it bites onto it that in there in order to get the correct height. Okay, so I got that in place, take that up, and fold that down the street. Okay, let's test it. I will remove all of the tools from down here. I'm gonna go downstairs, turn the water on, and check for any leaks. So I put it on partial pressure. Here you see the water rising. Okay, that looks good. Put it on full pressure. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hook this up to run it through a cycle.
get some pliers. Okay, slowly turn these on. Okay, that looks all good. in there I'm going to put some soap in it and this part needs to be flipped up if you're going to use powder. You're going to use liquid that goes down so it collects, doesn't pour into it yet. I'm going to select normal. Looks good. So it looks like I probably have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. There we go. Yeah, finally uploaded, updated. So 54 minutes, we'll finish at 12.01. So that gives me some time to cut that drywall piece. And get it all measured out and figured out. Okay, so I measured that and it is 36 and a quarter. Here's the completed drywall piece in place and hooked up. And then when we get around to painting this room, I'll go ahead and put the uh, drywall tape on it. It was amazing, right? <laughs> So when editing this video, I realized I didn't really end the video. Uh, I just wanted to say that the washer and dryer stacked is great. Um, and there's a lot of features with this GE washer and dryer um, that I'll go into details on another video. But uh, yeah, needless to say, the night before those getting delivered, um, it was a, a big pain to find out that I couldn't shut off the water spigot and then all of the follow-up in order to try to resolve that. Uh, another thing it made me reassess is where are your shutoffs in your house? Um, because there was no shutoff in between 
the washer and dryer in the main of the house. So if the, if I had put a shut off somewhere in there, then the rest of the house would still be able to function. So um, this uh, so just think about where your shut offs are in your house and whether or not it makes sense to put intermediate shut offs um, so that your whole house water system is not out of commission. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel as uh, we've been uh, getting more subscribers and uh, and then that uh, encourages me to make more videos. Uh, so have a great day. Until next time, take care.